Yes. It's all right, I'd like to just do a Bible lesson tonight. Yes. Teach a civil or something. I don't know really what the difference is, except maybe one's a little louder or, or more demonstrative or whatever. But let's, let's just learn tonight. Praise God. I've had this on my mind and heart for some time, and I thought about it and weighed that out. And I had this episode, so I couldn't be in the pulpit when I was supposed to be in the pulpit. So Brother Rankin asked me to help him out, so I, I'm going to do just that. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to use some of you here tonight also in the illustration I'm going to use with it. Amen. So you can be ready to, to, to go for it. Amen. In Psalms chapter 90, verse 9, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. I'll title this lesson tonight, Teach Me to Number My Days. Teach Me to Number My Days. God bless you, you may be seated. We have a plaque in our house that says this, Abraham Lincoln said, it's not how many years we have in life, but how, many, how much life is in the years to make our years count, praise God, to make our years count. Vitally important, isn't it? Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Cat also, she reads some things, sends them to me, and it, it had an hourglass that she sent to me, and I thought about trying to put it on the screen, but I'm not savvy in that, so I'll just read it to you. The biggest mistake we make in life is thinking we have time. Thinking we have time. Amen. How many of us have said, well, I'll do that when I have the time? Right. Yes, the mistake is thinking that we have time. Amen. It said in my text of scripture here, we spend our years as a tale that is told. You know how they used to be? Once upon a time. I know our kids were excited Yesterday, Brother Gerald brought some books, baby books, and for Adeline, and I'm sure that Elizabeth will get a hold of them in time, but she might remove some pages before she understands what the pages are for. You know, like Snow White and you know, those kind of stories and everything. And in fact, I've used it before, but the Gerald and I used a baby book when I preached the funeral for your grandson who passed away. You see, some books are big and heavy, but some books are little. And that was a little book. And I went into the nursery and got that book. And I gave it to your daughter at the funeral. Amen. So you've lived a long time, Brother Kate. Yes, in fact, Brother Rankin, I'm 50 years older than you. Man. Did you feel that? <laughs> the father of time kind of walked by. Brother Zach is here, and he just turned 17. Amen. I remember when Zach was born. Yes, sir. It was right here. Yes, sir. We dedicated him. But the time has just flown away, and here he is now. The grown man. I think he must have gone after 600 nuggets. Did he take the trip to get those 600 nuggets? Amen. 
Amen. He's been such a, a fine man. Yes, he has. Never had a problem with the right. Never had a problem with the So we spend our life as a toll, tale that is told. Once upon a time, you had your beginning. Once upon a time, there were three bears. Once upon a time, there was Cinderella, and how many? Yeah. 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 And one was named Grumpy. In fact, I know of one granddad that his grandchildren nicknamed him Grumpy. And the reason I'm sure that they nicknamed him Grumpy is he had a unique way of dealing with it. Amen. Kind of like. Now, I don't want to be that way, but by the same token, we do have to have some direction and some reading. Life is kind of like a fishing trip. I've often told a lot of people about that, discussed it with some of you. I've taken some of you fishing. I would like to take more of that, and that's, that's part of the tale that was told. So you're excited. You're going to go fishing. It starts early in the morning. Boy, we're going to go fishing. I took you fishing too, didn't I? Yeah, just after your accident, I took you fishing. Yes. And you can't wait. Get everything lined up. You prepared the night before. Got it all fixed up. And the adrenaline is pumping. Anybody ever got excited about going fishing? Yes, sir. I took you fishing, didn't I? Yes, sir. Praise God. I had forgotten that because of some things in the potato was tough. In fact, I, I, I knew of some men that were so excited about going fishing. Listen to this one. They jumped in the truck and they headed off. And when they got to where they were going to go fishing, they had forgot to hook the boat up. <laughs> Life is exciting, but you don't want to leave the boat behind. That's good. That's good. That's good. Amen. <laughs> and so you get to the place, you know where you're going to go, you got it lined up, got the right kind of bait whether it be live or artificial, and you're excited to find this particular spot. I need to take this gospel. I got to stop at least at midnight or you'll have to call for those people. That's not want me to walk very good, and that's nothing unusual. And sure enough, it's exciting. Boy, you just know it's right. In fact, I... When I take somebody with me, I get so excited, and they get excited. I took Gregory McCarthy when he was just, he wasn't hardly big enough to look over the dashboard, so I put a pillow on his set up, and I took him fishing. And I would tell him all about it, and uh, what it was going to be like. There was a place down there that you could stop, and there was an alligator. I always lived right there in that spot, and I'd show him the alligators. We had a zoo trip to go with him, get to the boat. And we head out, and we have a time. Brother Terry said, Brother Cat, what do you find to talk about? And I said, Brother Terry, two men and a boat and going fishing, there ain't no more of what to talk about. <laughs> Come on, life's like that. Now, since some things have transpired, I don't talk as much as I used to, but... Uh, I've found that sometimes it's better to listen. And Sister Kat thinks I don't do that either because she said, I spoke to and told you this, and you give me no expression. <laughs> Did you hear me? What did you say? <laughs> Sister Donna, I appreciate the way you respond to your husband when he's leaving worship service. And it's all over your face that you're excited about your husband. Praise God. You ought to be especially excited and always be blessed to know you've got a wife that's sitting there just smiling and thrilled and excited. And 
<laughs> My wife's been with me. We're getting close to an anniversary. She's been there and she's been responsive. Let me tell you what, how she is. If I'm going a little too far, she starts kind of <clears throat> clearing her throat. <clears> throat> and then when I get in the car, if she says, oh, honey, that was good. Man, I feel great. I thought it was a flop, but she said it was good. Yeah. And then there's been time I thought, well, this was it. I, I did it. I, 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 when I sit down in the car, she didn't say a word. She looked out the window on her side. <laughs> you know, life is like a fishing trip. And so you catch that first fish. I took some people fishing when you catch trout, but instead by the jewel it comes up with a shark. <laughs> took one preacher fishing one time, and I said, we'll get a trout here. We get through there, we're going to go there, we're going to get a redfish, and then we're going to get a flounder. Now that is really going way out when you're excited about a fishing trip. Come on, get excited about life. Get excited about life. And sure enough, we got that trout. And sure enough, I spooled it up, moved over close to the shoreline, picked up a redfish, and a little bit, we picked up a flounder. And what a time we had. Then you eat your snacks. Some people like kipper snacks. You don't want them at home. You don't want to eat them at home because they leave an odor in the house. But when you're fishing, you got odor everywhere anyway. But kipper snacks, some have mustard in this. I like mine just straight with some crackers, and we had a good time. And so you start saying, okay, it's time now we need to do something else. And so you spill it up and you head for the boat ramp. And you clean the fish because you're supposed to take the prey and keep it and clean it and eat it according to the scripture. So if you come up with a shark, that's kind of hard to do. So turn him back and let him eat, get a little bit bigger. Yes. There's a time when you load up and I've had different people with me. There's two people in my life that unloaded my boat while I was trying to load it. Brother Jacob's not here tonight, but I run the boat up on there and, and hooked up. And when I did, he took off. And the boat started unloading. And I screamed at him. He said, I've never been screamed like that in my life. That's when I had a real voice, I guess. And then it was Caitlin, and bless her little heart, we were in the, the Denali, and it was powerful. And she put that little foot down on that accelerator, and, and something malfunctioned in the rope, and here I go off again. So I hollered her, stop. And she stopped. She could I even took Sister Rankin fishing. That's right. She wore a cap, ponytails running out the back of that cap, and she was some form more happy. And so we went, and we were catching fish, and I got a telephone call, and that pen was delivered. So I said, look out, this old fisherman is going to stay on us. Am I doing okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're tired and you're weary. And if somebody showed up with just the right price, you're so weary, you would sell them the boat right there. But remember, you got fish and you got to ice them down. You're going to head home and you're going to grill them. And it's going to be special. I'm going to need some help so I can impose on some people to help me tonight. I need somebody that's around 20 years old. The scripture says our lifespan is four score, or three score, and ten. That's 70 years. If by strength, four score, that's 80 years. And then it's soon cut off, and we fly away. Brother Davis, you and I got flight plans. 
I know you don't understand me right now, but we got flight plans. Amen. We're headed somewhere. Right. Praise God. Praise God. I, I need uh, somebody that's close to 20. Not exactly 20, just closes. Right now, this is kind of like horseshoes, close counts. You don't have to be excited. Just call Vapor. It's like the grass. It soon grows up and it's cut off. And I did a little math, and if you want to, you can do the math with me and correct me or correct me if I was correct on it. But if you're 20, look on your yardstick. I gave him the right clean one. So you're 20 right here. This is your this way. Each inch of the yardstick represents two years. At 10 inches, that's 20 years. You have 26 inches remaining. But we spend eight years, excuse me, eight hours a day sleeping, some a little more or a little less, some a little more. We spend eight hours working and eight hours worshiping, living, and loving. So he has 26 years left. So let me, let me confirm with my notes. So 26 inches left multiplied by 0.66 leaves him with 17 inches. Over here. He has from 26 inches, out of 26 inches, is 17 inches. Eight of those inches is to sleep, eight to work, and eight, excuse me, that's Excuse me, get my notes straight again. You got 17 inches to work and to sing and to, and to sleep. And there's nine inches left with a little signal. You put your finger on it right there. You got nine inches left. That's all you got left, Joseph. Nine inches to live, to love, and to worship. Because it's consumed. No, I know he's young. You say, yeah. But that's. That's how it's marked off. Okay, to our yardstick with 40. There's your little mark right here. That's 20 inches. When you're 40, 20 inches is already used up. So what you have left of that 20 inches, what's left is 16 inches. And so from that, you have 11 inches to work and to sleep. Let's see. Right there. Right here. Hold it high. And then you have five inches to worship, to live, and to love. So at her age right now, this is all that really counts in what's left. The rest of it is spend it up. Brother Terry has one of the oldest yardsticks. I discovered this up there at my house, and it 
Texas Lumber Company. Did anybody here remember Texas Lumber Company? There are a few, but that's because you got some age over there. So 60, it takes 30 inches for the cherry. And so at 30 inches, you've got six inches left. You've got four inches to sleep and to work. And two inches left to live, to love, and to worship. That's a pretty sobering thought, and it kind of dawns on you when you see the yardstick and get a measurement of it. Now, there's, these are hypothetical or close numbers, but you see how our life is marked off. And you think, well, I've got plenty of time, but we don't have time. We can make it count even tonight. Every moment needs to count. Let me go to the rest of the message, and I will present a closure to I said, I don't know if you will or not. Yeah. In Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, I'll tell you what, if you want to, y'all can be seated. You can lay your sticks down there. It'll be fine. There you go. That's, just hold those up as remember. Yeah. Remember thou now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, now the years draw nigh, and thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. To the young people today, you're sitting on these pews, and I've watched some of you go from the waiting, the delivery room, from the nursery, and I've watched you go through the cycles, and here we are with all these strong, grown people in our presence. Amen. Fine young ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Jesus, for it. There is a reminder to remember our Creator. Remember Jesus. Yes, sir. Sister Kite put a song on last yesterday, and Jesus, Jesus is there. Is that the title of it? Jesus is there. And it, it was so touching, it touched me to realize that you can go through life, and sometimes your friends are with you, but after a while you realize you're all alone. But I want you to know that Jesus is there. And if you're in a dark alley, Jesus is there. If you're in a storm, Jesus is there. If you don't know what to do, Jesus is there. Amen. I thank God for Jesus. Praise be the name of the Lord. This was God's plan and God's idea. And it says in that scripture, while the evil days come not. Let's take just a moment to look through the next few verses, and I will just go speedily with them. The evil days, those years will draw nigh when you have no pleasure in them. Reality and truth of the matter is, as these years start drawing nigh, you have no pleasure in them. And here's the reason why it's listed. And it says, the keepers of the house tremble. That's your legs and your arms. You know, I used to have strong arms and strong legs, but something transpired, and all of a sudden, I kind of, and so I said, I noticed you walk a little different yesterday because my walk had gotten up and gone. <laughs> Amen. That's those evil days. So you don't want to make those things that you have count. Make that you count. Amen. And the strong men back. It's because their back bends. For a long time, this guy said, straighten your shoulders up. You talk about a taskmaster. <laughs> straighten up your shoulders. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I go to the chiropractor. He says, how old are you? He said that every time. If I just saw him the day before. How old are you? Probably will kick the short stick in next time if he says I'm on the swapping bed. That's how old I am. <laughs> and the grinders cease. That's your teeth because they're few. That's the evil days. I had a little joke, but I don't want to joke. This is kind of 
a serious moment. And we look out the windows. It's in those four verses after verse one. The windows are darkened. That means your eyes don't see like they used to see. The door are shut in the street and the grinding is low. And that's your ears. We don't hear what we used to hear. I've got a pretty good ear here, but this one here's a little like to be sorry. So if this cat wants to say something, she's got to address this ear. And even if she does that, sometimes I still don't respond. And it says they rise up, they can't hear, but they rise up early because they can have the, at the voice of the bird. They have no sleep. Sleep flees you. So I said, oh God, please don't tell us all this stuff. But you know, if somebody would have told me what it had been like to be at the end of the yard stick, I would definitely have done a little differently in some areas. Amen. And then it said, they're afraid of heights. I remember one time our work crew, all of our men that built churches and did great things, we decided to go help the church in Little Meads. I forgot to list them in the list, but they needed a roof. And so the man, we went to Louise and put a roof on them. And I thought, you know, I scaled right on up that ladder, and I jumped up on top of that roof, and when I got on the top of it, I couldn't do anything. I froze. I couldn't work. I couldn't. I did my best, and I got down that ladder and got out of it. Now, that wasn't just yesterday. That was a time back. And fear is in the way. That's your mind. Fear. And being afraid is in the mind. And the almond tree blossoms. That's the gray hair. The almond blossoms are white and gray. And it says, and desires have failed. Amen. It don't matter after a while. Just serve my rush. Amen. Why have you been out of shape over some trippings? Let me use the scripture for closing in Jeremiah. I will spend more time, but I've already talked about a lot of personal things. But Jeremiah 29 11. There is an expected end. For I know the thoughts, think about it, that I think toward you. thoughts of his thinking toward you. You see, when you were on the cross, when he was on the cross, you were on his mind. When he was on the cross, you were on his mind. Amen. I have the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. You were talking about peace already tonight. Amen. No matter money is not peace. When you get down to that part of that yardstick, what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the difference? You know, we work hard, amen, to get funds. And we use our health to get funds. And then when we're old, we spend our funds to get our health. And not of evil, but to give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. You and I cannot even think of the things that are in store and what he has planned. It hath not entered in the heart of man what God hath prepared. Amen. I've got to remind us folks that have this yardstick. There is an expected end. Amen. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray with unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. And when nobody else understands, when nobody can see it or hear it, or know, you can call on the name of the Lord, and he will hear and say he will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me, and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. Amen. Praise God, we have searched, searched, searched. How many times have you tried to find your glasses? 
And they were there all the time, right there in your eyes. Amen. He was there all the time. All the time. And I'll be found of you, saith the Lord. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place where I cause you to be carried away from. Amen. Amen. I know they're speaking of Israel, and we pray for Israel every service, and do it so because there's in conflict. And we know in the end time there will be conflict Amen. in Israel. Amen. But this is the new Jerusalem. This is his apple of his eye. And he said, I will gather you in. I'm going to take you, and I'm going to bless you, and you're going out. It's going to be better than you coming in. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Would you stand with me? I'm closing. Amen. I'm going to give you an expected end, he says. An expected end. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. But you see, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He writes the end of the story. Many people love to read just to try to figure out where the author is going and what he's been through. But I want you to know Jesus has been through it all. And he is the author and finisher of your faith. And when he writes it, it's done. He will give you an expected end. God bless you for that. Thank you for helping me tonight. Someday we can do something. I got to keep those yardsticks, though. God bless you. Yeah. 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 That was good. Very good. I preached a message one time and I calculated the average lifespan and went by age and how much time you had left. You, know, you can't wait for a moment to start living and start being happy. 